In recent years, it has really been evident that Honda has been pushing off-road capability for their light trucks. Like the Pilot, we got an all-new Pilot Trail Sport, we have a Passport Trail Sport, and of course, they won't forget about their truck, the Ridgeline Trail Sport. As they say, it's the most off-road capable Ridgeline to this date. Today, we are back again at Green Ridge State Park in Western Maryland. It's not the hardest trail in the world, but we'll at least be able to test the off-road capability and the VTM4 system in this Ridgeline Trail Sport. So we will first begin on Picklick Road. This is the road that I've gone. We always start with this road at Green Ridge. It'll be no challenge for the Ridgeline once again, but we're just out here to have a good time and to be out. And the Ridgeline is a good truck to do that. This Ridgeline in particular is a 2024 Ridgeline Trail Sport, which is a new trim for the Ridgeline. Honda says it's the most off-road capable Ridgeline to date. The MSRP of this Ridgeline as it sits right here is just about $46,000, which is actually a little bit less than what I thought it would be. And it's painted in Honda's Sonic Gray Pearl. But if you're wondering what comes on a Ridgeline Trail Sport, you get all-terrain tires, which is a nice improvement, general grab or all-terrain tires. You get a skid plate underneath that protects the oil pan, so that's pretty important but the skid plate does sit a little bit low and Honda does say the suspension has been optimized for off-road performance. They say they changed the sway bar and also the spring rates in the suspension as well. But we'll see how it actually performs. One more thing that Honda says they added for the trail sport trim level of the Ridgeline, even though it is available on other trims, is power folding mirrors. Makes it nice when you're on the trail because this thing is about 80 inches wide with the mirrors folded out. So it is helpful for not just your garage, but the trail as well. How you doing? Good. Yeah, so we're going to set off. I'm actually gonna put myself in sport and then make sure I'm in first gear. The nine speed has a lot well, much better gearing than this six speed. It feel, well, the six speed in the pre facelift. This actually feels pretty solid. Like it has a reasonable amount of crawl. It's not the best. I think this is like 20 to one, but the 10 speed is like 22 to one. But definitely because this does not have a low range, putting it in first gear really helps control that you'd look for with a low range, but it just has no real problem. Good torque. I took the Pilot Trail Sport off-road to Flagpole Knob. That was a good, a great trail. This one is much easier, and it's mainly because the Ridgeline just does not have the clearance that the brand new Pilot Trail Sport has. This is a little bit too low. I'm really hoping that we can find some more terrain that can actually challenge this a little bit, but we shall see. This is fun so far anyway. Right up here, there is a bit of something. <laughs> I got the HRV hung up here before, so we'll do some looking. This is where the bumper of this isn't the best because you don't have a front view camera in this ridge line but if you take the right line you really have <laughs> no trouble at all it gets a little bit more rutted up here though so i want i could of course just go right but i want to make it a bit of a challenge as i did with the hrv so I just want to be easy with my front end. Oh yeah? You can see how VTM4 works. I'm going slow because I really just can't see what, I, like, what this is doing. Oh yeah? Okay. 
This is exactly what I wanted to happen. I have the right front wheel up in the air and the left front wheel. So I'm gonna brake torque it so I don't roll back. This is normal mode. It really just claws its way up. I really don't think I'm going to need any of the other modes today, but it's worth it to see. The main thing with this is the front end. You just really can't see too much. I might have it splin again. No. Maybe not. See, this is why the Green Ridge is pretty easy for this area. Oh, for this truck, I mean. Thankfully, now it's pretty chill. This is what most of Green Ridge is because it's just a lot of camping here. It's nice regardless. There's this little bit of a mud hill here. Maybe the wheels on this side will actually spin a little. Let's see here, maybe. No, it just has no trouble. <laughs> it's time for windows up. Something about this one, the windows go up slowly, but... Nice. A nice puddle. It just rained here, so it's easy to splash. I would say a strong suit of the Ridgeline has always been its powertrain because it's always been pretty competitive. Of course, you won't find a V8 because Honda doesn't make a production V8 and imagine a V8 Ridgeline, but this is a great powertrain by Honda. This is the J35 Y6. It's a 3.5 liter single overhead cam V6, which is direct injected nowadays, and it makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. It's always made these numbers, and you can find this engine in the Odyssey, as well as the Pilot as well, and of course the Ridgeline. And now it's paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission, which is standard, and Standard in the Trail Sport is their iVTM4 all-wheel drive system, which is something that is quite capable, and I'd say it's one of the better all-wheel drive systems in the class. It's neck-on-neck -neck with Subaru nowadays, I'd say. So the Ridgeline is an interesting type of truck. It's not like the traditional Tacoma, Colorado, or Frontier, but it's based on the Pilot, and you could say also the Odyssey's platform, but more the Pilot because this is all-wheel drive. However, especially for being an off-road edition like this one, it only still has just about eight inches of ground clearance, so it is a little bit underwhelming. And because of the skid plates, which are very nice to have, they're a little bit lower, so in some other areas, ground clearance will be a little bit more of an issue. But there are plenty of lift kits out there. As you can see, Honda is going for the off-road ready look with these all-terrain tires. They're general grabber ATs, they're three-peak snow rated. They actually have been doing a pretty dang good job today. But if you get the HPD package, it's a whole accessory kit for the Ridgeline, it really looks cool. But again, I wish it had a little bit more ground clearance, especially for breakover angle. You can see the front of it is pretty low and the back, it's normal for a truck, but it could be tucked a little bit more. The tailgate is different and I quite like it. You can see Ridgeline is embossed into the tailgate like a truck. 
This one has accessory letters that are black that make it stand out even more, which I would myself, I get. Once again, on the truck side of things, the Ridgeline is a truck at heart. So you have the bed. It is a bit small though. It's only about five feet, which is definitely usable. It's more than enough for me because it's pretty wide. You can fit a regular sized riding lawnmower in here. You can also fit a four by eight sheet of plywood. Of course, the tailgate goes down like a normal truck and you can, you'll notice it's not damped, but it's kind of a compromise that's worth it because the tailgate can swing out, which is a staple of the Ridgeline. The first gen Ridgeline could also do this. Something else that the Ridgeline had was the trunk in the bed as well, which also can back up as a cooler because there's a drain in here and you can fill it with ice and have a good time when you're camping, which is nice. Wow, the smell of plastic in here. One thing I will note, because I see the spare tire in here, this Ridgeline does not have a full-size spare tire. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere uh, and you're on more remote terrain than we're out today, I would definitely bring a full-size spare because you just have a donut to deal with right now. But it is still very usable. There's lights in here and it's a standard composite bed as well. Very nice. And in terms of towing, the Ridgeline can tow 5,000 pounds. Every Ridgeline can tow 5,000 pounds. But of course, on the internet, you've seen people towing six, seven, eight thousand pounds with their Ridgeline. I wouldn't do that. This is a little road here called Polly Neal. It's kind of tight, but maybe we might get some wheel spin action. I'm crawling. Oh yeah. Let me see. It just drips and it has a decent amount of articulation for being a unibody truck. And like, it's easy to modulate the torque but compared to something with a low range, you kind of have to push down on the throttle a little bit more, but still a controllable amount of response. So you can see this ditch over here. If I was in something like a Tacoma, I would have without hesitation tried to at least do some sort of cross and then cross back over. But because of how low the front bumper is, I don't feel comfortable to do that. So we're just gonna go up the rest of the road. But I'd like to see some more clearance on the next ridgeline. <laughs> going to continue on this little trench down here, but maybe right about, mm, I can drive into it and then see. Yeah, maybe we'll get something, some action. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is normal mode. It does it with no problem in normal mode. I'm gonna back up and try to see if I can get a similar line, but in a different mode. Okay, so I'll go into mud mode. That changes how the traction control responds. Wow. You can see it allows more wheel spin. You just keep your foot on the gas and it just goes. So now sand mode. You can really see how it just bites with no problem. No problem. To me, it really seems that, especially with these tires, this has pretty much no drama because the VTM4 system is very capable. That rear differential really can transfer power around where it needs to be.
At the end of the day, Green Ridge really isn't that hard of an area to challenge the VTM4 system on the ridgeline, but it still is nice to be able to have a vehicle that lets you get out into the wilderness and then build a fire and just have a good weekend. And you can drive it during the week, enjoy it. It's really comfortable to drive. If you want to learn about how it is on road, you can check out the full review, which will be coming out pretty soon. It'll be up there. But I really enjoyed off-roading with this Ridgeline. It makes me hopeful for the future to hopefully see Honda actually dive into the off-road truck segment to go after not exactly the TRD off-road Tacoma, but at least be close to that with better clearance because the all-wheel drive system is really good. But enough of my rambling. I hope you all enjoyed this fun outing today. I sure did. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, peeps.